All right, let's work some power example problems and see exactly how these go. One, find the power of an engine that can do 3,700 joules of work 13 seconds. Now, in order to solve these, we're going to solve them just like we solve anything else where we're using a formula or equation to do this. You write what you're given, what you want, the equation that you're going to use to solve it, and then you plug it in. And for the sake of speed, I've already filled this in, but let's look at what each part or where each part comes from. So first, I write down my given quantities. That is, I read through the problem and what do they tell me? Well, in this problem, I'm told that 3,700 joules of work is done. So notice that I wrote down 3,700 joules. So I write the unit and then equals and then the symbol for what it is. Now, in this case, this capital W means work. Remember uh, to be very careful as to when W means what and when it means work, um, whether it's a unit or a quantity. So in this case, 3,700 joules, that's how much work I have done, uh, and 13 seconds, coming from right there, that's how much time has passed. So I say that's equal to T to show that that is a time. And what I want to find is the power. So find the power, that part right there tells me I'm looking for the power. And then I write down the equation power equals work divided by time. And now I'm going to substitute what of my givens I know. So I know that 3,700 joules is the work, so 3,700 goes on top, just like we see over here. And 13 seconds is a time, time goes on bottom, so I put 13 over there, and now it's a division problem. 3,700 divided by 13, and the total power, rounded off to the hundreds place, is 284.62 watts. Now notice that W comes right after a number. So this is the unit watt, which is the unit of power. So it, this engine will do uh, 284.62 joules of work every second. Remember a watt means one joule per second. All right, let's take a look at another one. And each example on this is going to cover a different situation. So I want you to be thinking of how each one is different than the last one. It's probably a useful exercise. All right, number two, find the work done by a 60 watt light bulb in 37 seconds. So in order to do this, I solve it the exact same way. What am I given? 60 watts, that's a power. 37 seconds, that's a time. So again, I'm including what quantity this is. And what I want is I want the work that's done. And so again, that W represents work. Uh, our equation, power is work divided by time. Now in this case, uh, I know some different things than I did in the last one. Whereas in the last one, I was trying to find power. Here I'm trying to find work. So I take my power equation and I plug in my givens. 60 watts, that's the power. So I replace the P with a 60. I don't know uh, how much work is being done, so I leave that as a W. And I know the time is 37 seconds. So I end up with this, 60 equals W divided by 37. And now I have to find what number do you take and divide that by 37 to get 60. Now the way this works, if I've got a variable and I'm dividing by that number, uh, I can multiply by that number on the other side of the equation to find the variable itself. So I take 60 times 37 is the amount of work. And in this case, it's 2,220 joules. So notice the difference in these. Whereas with this one, when I was trying to find power, the equation looks like this, and it's just straight ahead division, just like it says. With this one, where I'm trying to find the work, I have to do some algebra down here. And please, please do not look at this and just try and memorize when you multiply and when you divide and all of this, but rather understand the algebra behind this and you don't have to memorize much of anything. You'll simply know how to do it. All right, let's look at a third example. How long will it take a 150 watt sound system to do 800 joules of work? And if we look at this one, our givens, we know the power and we know how much work was done. This time we want the time. So now we're looking for a different quantity. We're still going to use the same equation, power equals work over time. My power was 150. 
my warp was 800 and the time, well, I don't know. Now, in this case, uh, instead of having a variable divided by some number, I have some number divided by a variable. But just like in the last case, um, what I can do is multiply by whatever we're dividing by. So here I'm dividing by t, so I multiply the other side by t. And what that tells me is that 150 times t equals 800. You can also think of this as being cross multiplication if you want to. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That will work fine just as well. So here I have 150t uh, equals 800. In order to find t by itself, I need to divide by 150. So I, here I get t equals 800 divided by 150. And my time will be 5.3 repeating seconds. All right, now let's make this as bad as it can possibly get. An ox uses a force of 500 newtons to drag a cart for 2,000 meters. If the trip took 5,400 seconds, what is the power output of the ox? That is, we're looking to find the power of the ox. So in order to do this, we've got quite a few things to look at. Uh, so first, you write down your givens, just as we've done before. I'm given 500 newtons, well, newton is a unit of force, so that must be a force, hence the F right there. 2,000 meters is a distance, meters is always a unit of distance. Uh, 5,400 seconds, that's a time, and I'm looking for the power, so I want to use the power equation. Power equals work divided by time. Now, you may notice a problem here. We're looking for the power, so we should have the work and the time. We have the time, but what we don't have is the work. We don't know how much work was done here. So we need to actually calculate that work, and we know that work is force times distance. So over here, I can say that work is the force, 500 newtons, times the distance, 2,000 newtons, and multiplying those together, uh, I can see that this is going to be 1 million joules of work that the ox has done. Now I can take my power equation, and if I know there's one million joules of work being done, I put that on top where work goes, I know my time, and dividing this out, I find that the power of the ox was 185 watts, uh, which for an ox would be taking it easy. So there you go. Four different problems um, that basically everything I'm going to give you uh, is going to look like one of these problems. Uh, in your lab, you'll see a slight variation on these, uh, but if you know how to do these general types of problems, uh, you should be just fine for anything I ask you to do in class.